Hey what's up guys, Rev here. Today we're going to talk about Pokemon and the horrible sins that franchise has committed. Well, at least according to some. We're going to look at an article that is trying so hard to be progressive that it ends up being backwards. It tries so hard to push for inclusivity in the Pokemon franchise that it ends up being bigoted in many different ways. Honestly, one of the most insane articles I've seen in quite some time. Insane enough to where sometimes I don't know whether to laugh or be angry about it, and we'll dive into it shortly. But talking about anything related to Pokemon is a bit of a stroll down nostalgia lane for me. You see, Pokemon was a big part of my childhood. As a currently senile old boomer, I was there right at the start, playing Pokemon Blue, Red, and Yellow on my Game Boy, learning what a healthy dopamine feedback loop feels like as I developed a crippling addiction to video games. I was even there watching the original anime episodes and crushing hard on Misty, my first anime girl crush. And after a few more related dominoes fell, that would lead to the development of my crippling hentai addiction. But in all seriousness, I grew up on Pokemon, as I'm sure several rounds of generations have at this point. I especially enjoy the anime, one that unironically was full of some decent lessons for a young lad like myself at the time. And although I don't play the games anymore, I still keep up with the franchise, you know, while doing research, of course. But regardless of your age, gender, whatever, I'm sure you've consumed Pokemon in one form or another. Despite all of this, some people don't think it's enough. Some people out there think that Pokemon is not inclusive enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you with today's article titled, Pokemon Needs More LGBT Characters. Now I've said this periodically over time, but it's worth quickly reiterating. Everyone is welcome around here. I don't care about your race, gender, preferences, or whatever. Live your life the way you want to, being different is good, and representation in the entertainment world is important. But I will also say, there's a good way of doing it, and then there's a bad enforced way of doing it. The second part is what is happening today. Pokemon is the greatest example of content that is consumed by all types of people around the world. And even the author recognizes this by saying that Pokemon often succeeds in ethnic diversity. But they add that it lacks LGBTQ representation. However, some Pokemon characters potentially fit the bill. So basically, we're going to play a game of determining characters' sexualities for them. How progressive. Let's give this a try, I guess. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I, I don't know what's so funny about this that makes me laugh. It's just, it's just weird. Ash Ketchum, bisexual. <laughs> Speculation on Ash's sexuality points to him being potentially bisexual, but romance could interfere with his plans to be a Pokemon master, making sexual self-discovery an afterthought. So he doesn't have enough time to be gay or something? Like what? Also, there's like three bridges to cross in hypothetical land to reach that conclusion. They go on to say his relationships with childhood friends Gary and Brock could suggest some attraction. Fellas, is it gay to have friendships with other males? There's nothing wrong with being bisexual, but forcing Ash Ketchum to be that way out of thin air for inclusivity is kind of weird if I'm being honest. James Morgan, gay. Possibly the most recognizable, presumably, LGBTQ character from Pokemon, James forms the iconic trio Team Rocket along with Jesse and Meowth. Sorry Meowth, I guess you're gay too. And then it goes on with the proof that James is gay because he cross-dressed in an episode. I don't know man, I mean that seems a little offensive to assume someone is gay for cross-dressing. I mean it's not exactly the same thing, you know, but whatever. Harley. Gay. More like hardly gay. Harley has very effeminate mannerisms, which include wiggling his hips as he walks and talking in a high voice. Bro, what is wrong with this person? It's like they're trying so hard to be progressive that they're backwards. They're wanting to make conclusions about people's sexualities based on the most benign behavior. It's kind of crazy, and I'm pretty sure this fits the definition of stereotyping. There has also been some discussions surrounding a potential enemies to lovers trope for Harley and May. But a section of the fan base seems to support the theory that Harley is interested in men. You, you can't just make characters or people gay just because you want them to be. Jeez, I understand the need for inclusivity, but it shouldn't happen like this. Jessie Marlowe, lesbian. She is essentially James's mirror image. 
where James acts feminine, Jesse acts masculine. More often than not, their wacky disguises reverse the male and female gender roles. Man, this author is going to lose their mind when they discover the concept of tomboys. Their whole worldview is going to be flipped upside down with that revelation. In the non-canon manga series, Jesse and James get married. But as far as the series goes, there is every possibility for Jesse to be a lesbian in canon. I mean, yeah, I guess anything is possible. Jesse could be a lesbian. She could also be a 300-foot Loch Ness monster that shapeshifts into her human form. You get what I'm saying. Next up in this carnival of wonders is... Go! Non-binary, gender fluid. According to the Japanese voice actor for Go, his character design was intended to be androgynous, meaning that his gender could theoretically be male, female, or neither. His appearance is open to interpretation, but the gender-neutral look suggests that Go could be easily viewed as either non-binary or gender fluid. I think we're off to a pretty bad start when you constantly refer to the character as he when you're trying to say they're non-binary. Again, it's just another situation where it should be up to the writers to make a classification like that. Androgynous is not the same as gender neutral. We're only talking about physical appearances to others here. Making up a label for someone on their behalf isn't progressive, it's invasive, and weird. And now we've reached the final character of this tournament arc, Wallace. Gender non-conforming. Wallace is elegant, graceful, and somewhat flamboyant. His costume choices are typically reserved for women, and they tend to show his navel and torso to shape his body. While he identifies as male, his personality mixes aspects of both genders, which has led fans to believe that he is gender non-conforming. You probably already picked up on this one, but let's read it again for the memes. While he identifies as male, his personality mixes aspects of both genders. While he identifies as male. Imagine in real life if someone identified as male and some random person who doesn't know a thing about them says, no, 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 no. You're actually gender non-conforming. Okay, that's pretty messed up. But that's the final character discussed in this article and boy howdy, that was a truly wild ride we just completed. This whole thing has been a masterclass example of how people try so hard to be progressive and inclusive that they end up being completely backwards. Striving for inclusivity so hard that they end up wanting to force gender identities onto characters, make stereotypical classifications, assumptions, and so on. It's actually crazy. I would want to believe that this article was satire, but I assure you that it's not. The site that I got this from is notorious for yeeting out these types of articles. If you laughed, got angered by it, or maybe both, I just hope at the very least, it was entertaining. Inclusivity in entertainment media is important, but it's also important to do it in the right way. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.